Hey, everybody. Welcome to the first episode of Innovation Tech Talks, where we bring you all the newest innovations in business, gaming, STEM, and sustainability quick, fast, and swiftly. Today's episode of Innovation Tech Talks is brought to you by Elk Products. Connected homes and businesses need smart control solutions focused on security. You know who can help you with that? Elk Products. Elk's M1 security and automation controls actually provide the ideal combination of security, access control, energy management, and integrated solutions for comfort, convenience, and simplicity. I'm not kidding. These guys do it all. It's great for residences, business, restaurants, fitness centers, everything. Visit elkproducts.com to learn a little bit more. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Innovation Tech Talks. You're chopping it up with Chuck. And we are here today with a couple of great guests we're really excited to talk to. Um, We have the CEO of Ninjio, Zach Schuler. And we have claimed actor, comedian, singer, John Lovitz. And we're going to talk a little bit about cybersecurity today. How are you guys doing today? Uh, great. Great. Thank you. Awesome. Well, i um, really excited to be here because number one, obviously cybersecurity is, it, it's, it seems like it's always front and center. And we wanted to, to talk to you guys about what exactly, what is Ninjio and what are you guys doing to help corporations and individuals kind of have, have a chance to fight against the threat of cybersecurity and ransomware and things like that. Yeah, so I guess I, I can I can take that. So um, so thanks for the intro. So so Ningio is uh, uh, we produce cybersecurity awareness training. Uh, we do it in a completely unique way. Uh, we produce three to four minute long animated episodes. Uh, every episode is written by a guy by the name of Bill Haynes, a member of the Writers Guild. Bill has written for, uh, he's got a combined 72 episodes of Hawaii Five O, the new series, uh, and CSI New York. Um, and so uh, from there, uh, the episodes are animated. Um, and every episode that we do is based on or inspired by a real uh, company or a real scam it's taken place and has made news headlines. And so we're keeping our audience super up to date with the latest threats, the latest hacks that are going on. Uh, And what we've done in season five um, is uh, we've been honored and fortunate enough to uh, be able to connect with John Lovitz. Um, uh, John and I are are friends from from our, our golf course. And um, uh, John is, uh, as you know, uh, a world famous uh, voice actor and comedian. And uh, John has agreed to, to help the cause. And uh, he, he's going to be a regular appearing character on Ninjio uh, with our first episode coming out right at the end of the month. Uh, not sure what the title is, but the topic is working from home where we go over, you know, five critical things that you need to know. Uh, if your employer has said it's not safe to work in the office anymore, go work from home and um, here's what you need to know. And so that's the, the next episode that we are releasing. So you guys are really staying on top of, uh, of the things that are affecting the workplace and affecting, um, you know, corporate America, especially with this work from home thing. Um, it seems like this might be a real, a real game changer. Like, you know, things might not ever be the same after this coronavirus thing. There might be a lot of people working from home. Uh, This cybersecurity is pretty important, isn't it? It, It's it's really important because at the end of the day, when you're working on a home, on a work computer at a corporation, they've put up, you know, multiple levels of security defenses between you and the bad guys. When all of a sudden you're asked to work from home, especially on your own equipment, that doesn't necessarily have its operating system up to date or its antivirus software up to date, or uh, if you're working wirelessly, you know, you don't have a secure VPN connection over wireless, right? There's all these things that you just don't have, these protections you don't have in place. You're so much more vulnerable. And so um, it's, it's, uh, it's going to become a big issue. On top of that, 
uh, with the pandemic that's going on, the number of scams that are coming out around the coronavirus, uh, you know, they're multiplying every day, just like the virus is. And, um, you know, literally, hack- yeah, I mean, hackers are, are doing everything that they can to get at you using uh, this virus as, as a vector. So it's, um, it's pretty important that people stay educated on how to work from home. So, um, uh, John, you, you're an iconic actor, comedian. I mean, you've done it all. You're, you're, you're absolutely beloved. You must, uh, you must get a lot of opportunities uh, to partner or to be involved with uh, things like this. What was it that, that kind of got you excited about uh, working uh, with Zach and the Ninjio team? Well, uh, you know, Zach's extremely nice man. And, and um, to me, everything, you know, is, it's um, a form of acting. You know, I do stand up. I've done movies, te- you know, sketches, television. It's, it's all different formats, but to me, it's all acting. And, and this is, you know, part of a, you do voiceovers and there's industrial jobs, which this is. But I I found the um, the information. I found it. I, it's it, I have a lot of fun doing it. it it's it's just like acting. I'm doing a char- different characters, and uh, I mean you'll recognize my voice, but it's different characters, and it's very funny and entertaining, and it's extremely informative. In fact, this last one we just recorded, I said to Zach, "I'm taking this script home and and using this for myself." And there's a lot of. I mean, I think he's really doing a good deed here and helping people. And uh, like you said, we're all working basically from home, and you and you know, unfortunately, who knows how long this is going to last. So this is really valuable um, information. And I think, and forgetting me, but I think Zach's doing a really a good service for people. Yeah. Have you ever um, yourself been a victim or, or accidentally, you know, clicked on something, a, a phishing scam or something like that, John? Um, yeah. And then you had to like quickly, sh- you know, shut your computer off or uh, even just yeah. on, um, on the on the Facebook on on a messenger and someone people started saying what is this message from you and it wasn't for me at all I said don't open it it's fake yeah uh, hey, yeah John, I don't John, know how I, people got in but that that yeah, happened to me a couple yeah, weeks John, ago John John don't worry that was me I did that to you oh <laughs> just kidding everybody's a comedian <laughs> <laughs> but only some get paid <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But it's, uh, yeah, I, it, it, I mean, the, the, I mean, just doing it, we just recorded it yesterday and it was very, um, I was learning stuff I didn't know. And I, I mean, to the point where I said, I got to take this home. I got to get a copy of this for my, uh, a manager who's working from home. And I mean, everybody, it's, it's really important. It, it, it Zach makes, he makes it, you know, it's simple, it's simple, but informative and, and can, you know, really protect your work. And yeah, I know. I, yeah, I get, in fact, I said to Zach, like, I'll turn my computer on. He goes, and then something just pops up and says, you have this many viruses. You should buy this thing. And I said, is this a scam? He said, probably you know, <laughs> on the average. Rate, I don't know. I wouldn't know that. I've never I always clicked. No, but yeah, it's, it, it, they're very clever. They, they are. They're sophisticated. They look real. You almost have to, uh, before you click anything, uh, you almost have to like, you got to look at it really skeptically. And I'm sure you guys probably got a video of, about that. Uh, right, Zach? Uh, we have a video about everything. Yeah. <laughs> at this point, we have, uh, we have 50, 54 episodes in the library now, and they all cover a different topic. And it seems really smart that you guys are going all in with the, uh, you know, first of all, three to four minutes. Is that because that's a good um time frame for the attention span of the viewer? That's exactly right. The human attention span has dropped uh, 33% since the year 2000. Um, we used to have the attention span of eight seconds, which was equivalent to a caterpillar. This is a true story. Basically, what that means is that if you're not engaged in what you're viewing, what you're reading, what you're listening to, the conversation, if eight seconds go by and you're not engaged into it, your brain goes somewhere else. It's now down to six seconds. That study was done by Microsoft between 2000 and 2014. So that's a six-year-old study. Imagine what it is today. I just heard that the millennial attention span is now two seconds, which means that if they're not engaged in what they're doing, you know, in two seconds, their brain goes somewhere else. And so it's like, 
through social media and everything else, we've created a form of ADD within society because of the way that we deliver information in such short bits and bites. And so I knew going into this thing, like, I'm not going to be able to lecture somebody for 10 minutes on a topic. Like it's got to be short and to the point. Wow. That is, that is, uh, that's really smart. And, and by the way, um, we, there's more ways for people to get in now than ever, isn't there? Like if, you know, people are working from home, you've got all your connected devices and it just seems like we have really opened ourselves up. Everything's connected. Everybody's on social media. Everybody's got, you know, email on their phones and stuff, but it seems like we've really opened up a lot of different ways for bad guys or bad actors to, uh, to get in and, and they're just getting better and better. Yeah, they are. I mean, what's, what's getting better actually isn't the technology. Um, you be, you might be surprised by this, but you can now go online Mm -hmm. and you can buy a ransomware kit from somewhere in Eastern Europe. And all you got to do is load up the email addresses that you want to send the ransomware out to and you push go and it'll send out ransomware to, um, you know, whatever email addresses you put in there. And guess what? If you have a problem, they have an 800 number for tech support. So that's what's going on out there. It's called crimeware as a service. And so people, individuals aren't necessarily getting that much more sophisticated. I think, you know, the scammers are getting better and they're taking advantage of more things and figuring out, you know, more things to take advantage of. But the hackers, like the true people that are breaking code and stuff, like you don't need to do that anymore. All you need yeah. to do is let somebody in. And, um, and you know, they are getting, they're getting crafty when it comes to that. Yeah, yeah. So there's no, um, uh, as far as material uh, to cover, there's, there's, it's literally endless. Like it's almost like you can't keep up with as many different creative schemes as there are. So there must be lots of subject material for you guys to crank out videos. Yeah. I mean, if John would do an episode every day and Bill would write an episode every day and we could animate an episode every day. I could literally put out an episode every day <laughs> and I could, and I could retire. And yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so you said, well, what, you said, well, you guys, Zach, I have a question then with both of you, isn't it kind of like what you, when you get the robo calls and it, it'll say, uh, Hello, this is the IRS. You owe us money. Please call us back at this number. And people do. And then the IRS says, no, we don't call people. We don't give numbers. It's like a scam like that, but it's on your computer, right? And I think that's what did. Well, well, yeah. I mean, those scams happen on your computer, but, you know, Ninja, we cover phone scams as well. We've covered that exact scam. Um, Because it's not just about the computer. It's about all the different ways that people get scammed, which is, you yeah, know, I mean, you, I get those calls all the time. I get insurance and call about you, uh, you, your insurance or your warranty on your car is about to expire. Please call this number, you know. Yeah. And uh, and I, I know my warranty is, isn't going to expire, and it's not from the dealer that I bought the car. Or the, you know, it's just it's constant. Yeah, and that's just yep. calls, and on the computer, it's nonstop. You know? Insurance. I got. Good. I got, I got a really good one where they would leave a voicemail on my, you know, I've got, I've got an iPhone and they would leave a voicemail saying, Hey, this is Apple support. Uh, your phone has been infected. Give us a call back. We'll tell you how to fix it. Um, and then I called them back, you know, eventually they kept calling and leaving messages. And finally I was like, all right, what's this all about? And I called them and I just, again, you know, like I said earlier, I'm pretty skeptical of this kind of stuff, but, but, uh, they, I could tell that it wasn't, it wasn't real. It was a fake phone phone room somewhere else. And they wanted me to give them access to my computer so they could go in and fix it yeah. on my Mac. And I, I can tell you right now, you know, maybe I got lucky there, but there's a lot of people out there that don't know. And especially what I've heard from a lot of stories is a lot of older, older folks, like a lot of people's parents, you know, they're kind of trusting and they, um, you know, back in the days, you'd trust that voicemail or whatever. And they're getting, um, you know, they're, they're getting um, taken advantage of almost like this real virus that's out here. You know, it seems to disproportionately hit uh, older people. So it's, um, it's, it's, it's really scary. We've got to keep our, 
um, parents and grandparents and and stuff like that in the loop as well because they seem to be a, a target for this kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Older folks definitely get taken advantage of with this stuff more than anybody else does because they're they're just um, you know they're they're they haven't had they, they weren't born with technology in their hands and they haven't yeah they haven't learned to be skeptical as much as we have. Okay, everybody, we are going to take a break real quick uh, to recognize one of our sponsors, but we'll be right back with the very first episode of Innovation Tech Talks right after this. Today's episode is brought to you by Generac.com, the number one name in home backup generators. Generac manufactures the widest range of power products in the marketplace, including portable, residential, commercial, and industrial generators. Generac is also committed to developing a long-term vision that promotes environmentally responsible products, processes, and partnerships. Visit www.generac.com. That's www.generac.com to learn more. Hey, everybody, we're back. Welcome to Innovation Tech Talks. We're here speaking with Ninjio, John Lovitz, and Zach Schuler, and talking about cybersecurity and why this should matter to you. So what advice would you give to our listeners now? You know, maybe just a couple of practical things that they could do besides, um, you know, obviously they should they should check out your website. They should check out what you guys got going on over there. But can you uh, can you give them just a, a couple of tips to to try to stay safe out there and on the World Wide Web and, uh, you know, with your cell phones yeah. and your social? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I think um, I, I, I think. Uh, you know, if I, if we look back at the episode we recorded on Monday, we cut, co- we covered, you know, a few things and I can reinforce, it, right. Number one is always update the operating system on your Mac or your PC, your iPhone or your Android. Um, those updates, while you might think that they can, they contain feature updates, which many times they do, they always contain security updates. Uh. And so if those are up to date, the ability of a bad guy being able just to send you an email and then get in that way is mitigated. Whereas if it's not up to date and your applications like Adobe aren't up to date and everything else that asks you to update it, just consistently update your application. I'll cover something we didn't cover in the episode um, so that John knows about this. Thank you. There are a ton of apps that we've downloaded on our iPhone that we've taken a look at, we used for 30 seconds and then we said, eh, I'm not really going to use that app again. Well, many of those, especially in the Android uh, community, um, can end up getting infected with malware if they're not updated and you open up the app, um, you can be in trouble. And so the recommendation is sanitize your phone, go through all the apps that you have. And if you don't use the app, delete it. Um, Do the same thing on your PC. If you've downloaded apps on the PC from like, you know, the play store, the windows store, whatever, if you don't use it, get rid of it Uh, because it it could contain bad stuff. Um, The next thing is if you have uh, antivirus software, Um, which is also known as endpoint protection software. You know, it's got built-in firewalls and all this kind of fun stuff. Yeah. Don't be cheap. Pay the subscription fee Mm. and keep that up to date because that's going to help out as well. And then, you know, I think the final thing is, is the day and age that we're living right now, March 18th, 2020, in the, the, the heat of a pandemic, be careful of what people are trying to do to get to you leveraging the pandemic as the vector, right? Yeah. Um, donating to this. Um, there's a big one out there now. There's this really cool map that you can pull up on your computer that is like a, a heat map. It'll show you where the cases are and you click on it, it'll show you how many cases in this county and how many people are have died and all this kind of stuff. There's a bunch of these fake maps out there now that when you go to it, it'll ask you to download a piece of software to make the map work. 
What you're doing is downloading a piece of malware that's giving a hacker complete control of your computer. Oh. So that's one to look out for, especially right now. Um, that's, a, that's a big one. Another one is people are pouring now, they're, they're looking for hedge funds because the market's been doing so horribly. They're looking for you know, new investors that, that run hedge funds. And so people are literally putting up these fake websites of these fake hedge fund um, investment brokerages where you call them, and I don't know all the details of this, but I suspect you call them, you give them your social, you get an account set up, you give them your bank account number, your routing number, all this kind of stuff. And you give them permission to pull out a hundred thousand dollars out of your account to set up this new account. that's going to be, you know, shorting the market. And all of a sudden you're out a hundred thousand oh. um, dollars. So there's all kinds of just stuff going on right now. And you have to be hyper vigilant about anything that's coronavirus related. I would say that if you get an email um, and it's got links in it, don't click on them. If it's related to coronavirus, you know, go to your computer, go to, go to the CDC, go to the world health organization, um, you know, department of whatever, you know, your city or County is and, and limit your information gathering from those, you know, four resources. And, um, you know, don't look elsewhere uh, because you could fall into what's called a watering hole attack. You know, you go to a website and like I said, it wants you to download a piece of software and now you're owned. Um, I think that'd be my advice for the current state of affairs as of today. Well, I have a question for you, Zach. What about on, <clears throat> on Facebook? And then you see all these ads for these masks, face, you know, face masks. Go, no, this one works. This one works. You know, the others don't. And then doctors go, none of them make a difference you know and, and could that be a fake thing a fake mask absolutely and- I, I, it could be a fake ad that's driving you to a website that's got a piece of malicious software on it that's then going to ask you to download something or whatever to you know to see a 3d version of the face mask or something ridiculous like that that lots of people would fall for at the end of the day the face masks mm-hmm. they need to be n95 face masks those are the only ones that'll actually stop the virus um, go to Amazon and search for them. Um, they're really hard to find. I heard of a doctor last night paying a uh, hundred dollars for 20 face masks. Um, but yeah, just, uh, be careful of all that stuff. Hey, are you, a uh, John, are you a, are you an Apple guy? Do you use, uh, like iPhone or, yeah. uh, so, yeah, yeah. So, so do I. And I've always heard, you know, people said a long time ago, oh, Max, don't get viruses. Max, don't get viruses. Uh, Zach, what's the tale of the tape? Do, do Max get viruses? Oh, a- absolutely. They're, they're as vulnerable, if not more vulnerable than PCs are. Look, when Mac owned 3% of the market mm-hmm. and a hacker was going to make a piece of software to hack some to hack a computer and Microsoft owned ninety seven percent of the market. Who do you think they're developing the software for? Oh yeah, Windows, right? Mm-hmm. Well, now Mac owns a big part of the market, and so who do you think they're writing software for now? Apple. Apple did not have security built into their DNA. They've gotten a lot better, but when they started, security was not part of their DNA. Microsoft security was part of their DNA because they're getting hacked all the time. So they're, 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 I would say they're equally vulnerable. Um, Android, uh, Chrome is vulnerable. Everything's vulnerable. You just got to keep all of it up to date. Keep your endpoint protection up to date and don't click on stupid stuff. Wow. Man, that's a, that's a lot of stuff. At least, uh, um, you know, people know what to look out for. And, and I think this is going to help people be a little bit safer out there because it's the, it's the wild, wild west as far as all this stuff, uh, as all this stuff comes. Where can, uh, where can our listeners find out more about uh, Ningeo, Zach? Uh, probably just best to visit our website, Ningeo.com. Uh, N-I-N, all ends like Nancy, N-I-N-J-I-O.com. Okay. And, uh, you know, up there, we've got some sample episodes of uh, just general security awareness training that we do. And, um, you know, you can go out up there and if uh, you wanted to be contacted by one of our 
uh, reps that'll, uh, you know, reach out and give you a more in-depth demo of everything that we cover and all the stuff that we do. Uh, you can go out there and just, you know, fill out an inquiry and, and somebody will be in touch within about 24 hours. Um, and uh, yeah, and we're happy to help. Awesome. And John, you got anything uh, besides this project here? Do uh, you got anything coming up or, or anything that you, uh, you want to let our audience know about? Uh, well, on, on TV, I'm on a, a game show called Funny You Should Ask. Uh, it's, it's um, you know, six comedians and Byron Allen produces the show and it's, it's like a funny game show. We just tell jokes. So if you need to laugh, I'd watch that. And then, uh, you know, in the future, I have stand up dates, but right now all the clubs are closed. It's, yeah. Uh, they're not, it's, it's, it's a very strange time. All the clubs are closed. The, the, uh, the, they can't shoot the TV show because obviously you need more than 10 people to, to do a television show. And so that's not happening. And then all the movies and television shows are shut down. I mean, the whole entertainment industry is just basically uh, closed. Yeah. These it's are- very strange. I've never experienced anything like this. I mean, it almost sounds like <clears throat> when uh, um, Orson Welles did the radio show HG, uh, you know, HG Wells' uh, War of the Worlds, and everyone panicked. And it, it's, it, I mean, it's it's kind of like uh, time is stopping. I, I unfortunately was in New York when nine eleven happened, and I remember that day, and everybody was just in a daze and in shock. And it just seems like that's what's happening now, and uh, <clears throat> you know, no one knows what's going to happen next, and then. By the way, I don't have it. That cough is from yeah, I was gonna say, that's <laughs> a bronchitis and allergies. Yeah, I, but, yeah, you know. I, I can I can attest to that. I was with John uh, like like eight weeks ago, and he still had the cough. So um, unless yeah, he was unless virus. he was victim zero in the U.S. <laughs> unless I had the virus for <laughs> six weeks, I'm yeah. fine. But uh, it's it's yeah, it's um man, I'm doing a lot of stuff. But this is I. It's one of the strangest times and. And I just know when I when I uh, recorded the script, and I was reading, and I literally said, "Zach, can I take this home?" And the, I mean, it's really important stuff, but it's it, he he writes it in a way that he makes it very simple to understand and easy. The stuff you the steps you can take to protect yourself on your computer are very simple because I'm not like the most, you know, I can't write software or do anything like that. I do creative stuff, but even I understood what he was talking about, you know. And it's it, it's a good thing. It's very helpful. It's a good. It's like doing a I think he's doing a good deed, you know, for people right now to, to protect them. Well, I think that's right. I think that's exactly why we need to get the word out about this is so that we can help protect people. Um, and, and you're right, John, this is, these are weird times, not only in real life, but on our, on our connected devices as well. So anyways, I, I really appreciate your guys' time. Um, it has been a pleasure speaking with you guys and we'll look forward to more innovative cool little videos coming out of Ninjio. And uh, to everybody out there listening, thanks a lot for tuning in to Innovation and Tech Talks. You've been chopping it up with Chuck, John Lovitz, and Zach Schuler here. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you for listening to today's episode of Innovation Tech Talks. And if you like this podcast, make sure that you like and subscribe and share with your friends. Also, make sure to check out all the latest tech news at InnotechToday.com and make sure you give us a follow on social media. Innovation.